oh, fuck. What's up? It's your boy Chula Chula Troy, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching me, what's up? My name is Chula Chula Troy. Why are you already here? Why don't you go ahead and give this video a big fat like, comment down below, and subscribe because it really helps out the channel a lot, a lot, a lot. And without further ado, let's go ahead and cue the thing. Welcome to college. Class is now in session. Take your notebooks out. Get ready to take some notes or not. It's up to you, the grade that you want to make. So as you probably read in the title and as you can see by the thumbnail, I'm going to be talking about college just generally, a few experiences and also some expectations and realities of college. So let's go. All right. So first I want to talk about making friends social distance style. How is that gonna look? How are we making friends these days? Yeah, there are social media, we're wearing masks, so you really don't see what people look like. So it's like, you know, if we're cutting down all of this person-to-person -person interaction, how are you meeting people organically? How? So I feel like that is a question that many people are starting to answer that will be really hard because yes, while schools are still having programs and stuff, a lot of those programs and events are now being held virtual and of course, of a school is completely remote or online everything is online so i feel like it will in a way work against us being so technology savvy and trying to connect on a social level at that extent but also i feel like if you're a loner or even if you're not a loner everyone deserves to have a nice group of friends who they can you know, just be comfortable with and just experience life together with. One thing I do want to say though, not everyone you meet will be your best friend. So, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people, they go into college with these social media friends who they've met through like Facebook groups of incoming freshmen or like transfer students or in general, or, you know, like you meet people who go to, <laughs> meet people go to Instagram. You meet people who go to your school through Instagram and you think, oh my God, we're gonna be such close friends or, oh my God, I know so many people already because of social media. And then you get on campus and it's completely different. Uh, this is from my personal experience. I followed like a lot of people that went to my school before I actually came here. And then when I actually got to my school, I talked to hardly any of them. So don't think just because you see somebody on social media that y'all finna be best friends whenever y'all meet each other or link up. Not saying that that's not gonna happen because it very much could, but that's probably not gonna be the case. And another thing that I wanna talk about are these big uh, freshman groups normally that are very large. You guys are the best friends of everything. You're always in each other's rooms. You eat together all the time. You have group chats and it's just, you're just like, you know, I found my people. These are my people. And then as time goes on, slowly but surely people start dropping off and that big old herd turn into a little group. And you just like, where did everyone go? And you just realize not everyone is who you thought they were. Or, you know, not everyone is meant to be your friend. So it's like, it was cool to be associates with them, but now you know who your friends are and who, you know, who you connect with on a deeper level than just hanging out with. After, without having any friends in college, because I go to a school out of state, so I knew completely no one that went to my school. And that's okay. You will meet your people in college. And that is another thing I felt I didn't believe at first that you, you know, you meet your lifelong friends in college, but it takes time for you to get to know somebody and understand them and understand how they work and see if you guys are compatible together. And like, it's not gonna happen in the first month or two of college. I mean, for some people, they are the bestest and their lifelong friends will be their roommates. But for me, me and my previous roommates are not the best of friends or lifelong friends. You know, I found uh, those lifelong friends to be other people who I met just randomly through me being, you know, connected to other people or going to this event or going to that. And it's just like, wow, didn't even know we were gonna be friends and look at us three years later, still going strong. So like I said, going to events and things, you try to find people with similar interests as you to help you like make friends. Cause I feel like once you have some interest, not saying that everything that you like is gonna be the same thing as everything that they like. But if you have a similar interest, that's one thing that you guys can talk about. And that's one thing that you can bond over and you get to know each other more and you get to know like, oh, we like this or we like this together and we have this in common. And it's like, then you're building steps to the friendship. You'll attract people who genuinely like you for you and you don't have to feel like you're putting on or you know, you're this facade for your friends or whatever. I mean, if you wanna do that, by all means, live your life. But it's much easier if you're just yourself. 
And not everyone who you like and trust are actually people you can trust. Make sure that you can trust them and that you like them before you go and sprout your whole life to them. Another thing is even though we are experiencing school during this pandemic, try to be as social as you can. So go to those events that your school is having, go to those virtual events that your school is having, see what clubs and organizations are offering and you know, just try to mix and mingle with as many people as you can to see you know, which group of people you feel like fits your vibe, fits your aesthetic, see who you get along with and then you can build from there. And also, don't feel like you're the only one who may be feeling scared to do certain things when you're like new to campus or you have anxiety or you just are just like, oh my God, this is a lot at once, adjusting to a new place or whatnot. It's okay, you're not the only one. There are plenty of other people who are in that same position as you, so don't feel bad at all. Next, I wanna talk about getting involved. So for me, getting involved was so important because from the experience of getting involved, I am very involved in a few things. You always hear like when you go to college, it's okay to try out 10 to 12 different clubs, but narrow it down to two or three who you're gonna devote your time to and really pour your all into it because that's when you find you will get a really rewarding experience from that club or organization rather than spreading yourself thin and having to leave one meeting 30 minutes early to make it to another meeting and then leaving that to go to another meeting. It's like everything flows when you don't have as much going on, but you still have a lot going on with those two or three different clubs. Go to your school's website to see what clubs and organizations your school has to offer. If they don't have a club that you like, start your own. Simple as that. See when these clubs are having general body meetings, see who's there, see if you like what they stand for, see if you like what they support, join if you like it. If not, there are plenty of other clubs and organizations and pretty score your school offers that you can find one place where you feel like you can call home. And along with calling that place home, it also helps with the student experience, I feel, and helping you feel like you are a student at that college or university that you attend. And when you get involved, it really makes the campus feel a little bit smaller because you're like, oh, I know people now. Oh, I have like things to do now. I have this event going on. I have this meeting going on. I have to meet these people that I'm a part of this club and we're about to go hang out or we're about to go eat lunch together. And it's just really nice. And obviously not all of these things will be as easy now since we do have to social distance and keep those safe practices in order. But joining different clubs and organizations allows you to meet people who otherwise you would not have ever talked to. And I know that is very true for me. So, I mean, I've enjoyed being on campus and really joining different clubs and organizations that have brought new experiences for me and basically been so fun. Another thing to preface in regards to classes are be prepared for some of your professors and teachers to give you more work than you normally would because it's an online course. They feel like, oh, it's online, so that makes it easier for you, and which it doesn't. So those teachers are always a pain in the when they feel like, oh, I'm just gonna overload the students with work and that's how they're gonna learn. I learn by you teaching, so do your job. Thank you. Note to the wise, if you do have problems with professors, there are people up above them who cut their checks who you can go to and be like, yo, check your person. They need to get in line. Sadly, you need to be prepared to teach yourself too because some teachers will simply think, oh, I can post the three sentence prompt and give these students uh, one video lecture to watch that's 15 minutes long and then they are supposed to automatically know what's gonna be on the homework or what's gonna be on next week's test. It's like, it don't work like that. I need you to actually teach, not just give me a video lecture of you talking about a subject but not going into detail when there's gonna be detail needed on the test or on the homework assignment. It's like, you didn't teach me this, so how am I supposed to know? So some teachers are just lazy like that and it is really frustrating, especially now that it's a pandemic, you can't just go to office hours, but be prepared to teach yourself some things. Some classes will become more difficult since they will be more remote learning instead of having in-person. And even though teachers are saying that they will be as flexible as possible with their schedules and things, don't always trust that because some teachers say that and then you reach out to them and it takes them three days to respond back to you when the assignment was due two days ago. And you're like, when I needed you, you weren't there. You left me hanging high and dry, bruh. What was good? And then there are those professors who we all know and like, who are great professors who actually teach you. They cut bad jokes during class, but it's so rewarding for you to see their sense of humor come out. And they're really personable and they like talk about their life. Sometimes teachers talk about their life too much, but you know, they feel like they're connecting with you. So those are the really nice professors. Don't take advantage of them. 
because they are hard to come by sometimes. So this probably goes without saying, but because something that is different is we can't just go to the library and have huge study groups where everyone comes together and we're all studying in the same room together. You now have to have virtual study groups and it's like, how will that work? Like people lag, microphones, uh, to going into a study group, you know, you feel me? Yeah, question in the back. How do you address a bad teacher? Got it, let me answer it for you. When you do have a bad teacher or you do have problems, of course, if you don't understand what you were learning, you ask your classmates, create group chats with them and, you know, see if they can help you understand it. But if it's like becoming a real problem where you're just like, the teacher is just not helping me at all. Like I said, go to the higher ups, email somebody, see if you can switch classes ask for a different professor. Like if there's a will, there's a way. And sometimes, you know, these universities, they lie to you and they say, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. Oh, or I'll talk to them and then the professor never changes. You mean to tell me I'm paying my money to you and you can't help me get my education what I'm paying for? No, I'm not having it. Put your foot down and you tell them what you want. Last time I checked, college ain't paying you, is it? Exactly, I thought so. All right, so now we've got to the point of the video where I'm finna expose you to some of these expectations versus realities that y'all have for college. And I'm like, where do you get these expectations from? Because in real life, it's nothing like that. So, all right, so let's get into these expectations versus reality. Expectation, if you're living on campus, you probably will expect that campus will be bursting with excitement. There's gonna be so much going on. You're gonna constantly see people walking around on campus and it's just gonna be booming. Reality, campus will probably be dead. Nine times out of 10, you will see people walk into class if you're on campus. If not, people will most likely be held up in their rooms. So, you're basically gonna be quarantining in your room without the quarantine effect really in place. And you'll start to hate the food day by day, so then you'll starve to death. And your campus will start to feel smaller every single day. When you first arrive, campus is so big, you don't know where anything is, but as time goes by, it's gonna become small. You're gonna be like, oh, this is my campus, literally, the back of my hand. Another expectation I feel is now that classes are either completely remote for you or online mostly, people think they'll have more time, more free time. And it's like, okay, I like can go to class 11 to 12, 15 online. And then, you know, I'm not in person, so I don't have to do anything. I'll have more free time to do whatever I want to do. Play the game, online shop, eat. I don't know, you'll have more free time. But the reality is you'll still be doing work all the time. Let me put you on game. The work never stops once it starts. Another expectation when people come to college or when they think about college is, oh my God, I'm gonna hang out with my friends 24 seven. We're gonna constantly be hanging out. We're gonna be inseparable. When in reality, that is very true. You will spend a lot of time with your friends and you will have a lot of fun. But college is also one, a super high stressful environment Two, you will develop major sleep deprivation. And three, college will make you wanna cry sometimes for no reason, just because you're there. Another expectation is that people think college professors are so mean and so strict and they're so stern and their minds can't be moved once they're made up or anything like that. When in reality, some of these professors are pushovers and it's just, it, you can tell. But there is no handholding in college, so you are responsible to do your own stuff. Another expectation that people see a lot or I feel like you always hear about is college changing you so you forget your past life and you forget your past friends and you're just like, oh, I'm a new person now. I'm, I went to college, I met new friends and I'm this person now. And it's like, oh, don't forget where you came from. Don't start acting brand new now. I mean, but in a way that is kind of true because when you're in this new environment, of course it's not gonna happen overnight. But you know, you will meet new people and you will fall out of contact with the people who you thought were your friends in high school, but you just talk to them as associates because they were there and they were convenient people to talk to at the time. And you will only stay in contact with your true friends. Let me say that again. You will only stay in contact with your true friends. People who only care about your well-being and you care about theirs as well. Another expectation that people think is that all-nighters are so fun and they're so exciting. I'm here to tell you from experience that is kind of true depending on why you're pulling the all-nighter. Some all-nighters, if you're just pulling an all-nighter to stay up with friends and hang out, okay, that's fun. But also there will be those random, awkward, outer world experience all-nighters where you go delusional because you have an assignment due the next day. 
and you're staying up working on that assignment and you start to lose your brain. Not your mind, you start to lose your brain. Yeah. Another expectation that people think is they'll never skip class and they will be at class every single day. They'll be prepared and they'll be present. In reality is that's just not, that's not true. When you're in college, I mean, obviously I keep saying this, but online experience, when you're online, maybe it's gonna be different. Maybe you would be more motivated to, you know, connect from your phone if you aren't at home or, you know, take your laptop, portable places, which is something that is kind of like a pro in a way. You can be on vacation and still be in class if you have remote learning when you think about it. But even if you are on campus, you can still go on vacation during college. I mean, I've done it before. Not to say that you should skip class, but I definitely don't recommend it if your teacher is gonna be like a big pain about it. But it's okay to miss a class or two to go on a day adventure with some friends and hang out, or you know, to treat yourself to a nice meal because your class is, you're caught up on everything. All right, so that is the end of the expectations versus realities. And some of those expectations were purely assumptions. They weren't even expectations, but whatever, who cares? And ultimately college is what you put in so whatever you put into college is what you get out and I'm not talking about money. So, you know, the more you put into college, the more you get involved, the more you make yourself be a full-time student and be active and being in college, the more you will get out of being in a college and being a student and like really enjoying the perks that college has to offer. That is the end of the video. So thank you for watching. If you're still watching, remember to like this video, comment down below and subscribe while you're already here. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that Trilla Troy would really love your love and support. And until the next video, peace. Oh, fuck.